Hey everyone, so Meta just dropped a new text to image model called Imagine. Not forward slash Imagine, just Imagine. So today we're gonna dive into it, see how it performs. Plus I've got some interesting details on where the model was trained. I mean, it is Meta, so I think you can kind of guess. I've also got a look at something from the bleeding edge of AI imagery, a relightable animated avatar. And trust me, this is not that bobble-headed, weird blinking AI avatar that we've seen before. This is something new. Not only that, but we also have a look at the latest photorealistic AI video generator. Okay, let's dive in. So imagine Meta's new text to image model was released a few days ago. It is available right now. It is free. It is unlimited generations and is at imagine.meta.com. Now there is one caveat to that, namely that it is currently only US based. So if you live in a country outside of the US, you might want to think about using a VPN. Interface wise, it is about as basic as it gets. You have a prompt box and a generate button. There are no options for aspect ratio. There is no way to image prompt. To be honest, I find the simplicity actually refreshing. There's obviously been a lot of feature creep that has occurred in the various AI image generators, and I get it. We all want maximum control over our output. So I wanted to take a look at Imagine as just a straight image generator. After all, if we find something that we like, we can always expand the canvas or in paint to our heart's content via a number of other platforms. So Imagine was trained kind of unsurprisingly on 1.1 billion Instagram and Facebook photos. So yes, if you've ever been tagged in a Facebook photo, or if you've ever taken a selfie at that cool brunch spot, you probably exist somewhere in the Imagine model. So bearing that in mind, we'll kick off with some softballs and gradually ramp up the difficulty. So this is soup and sandwich at a rustic cafe. Uh, yeah, it looks good. Uh, chicken noodle and I guess a ham sandwich. I don't know if that's a combo I necessarily would go with. But overall, it is a pretty decent image, nice lighting on it, uh, good depth of field. If I had a minor quibble, it does look like the bowl is uh, a bit comped in. But for the most part, if you were to see this in some kind of commercial spread, uh, you probably wouldn't think twice about it. Moving over to kind of the more benign side of Facebook, I decided to prompt Family Vacation Disneyland, namely because I think that there are a lot of those images on Facebook. Imagine generates up four images per prompt, and you know, it gave me four pretty solid uh, versions of Family Photo at Disneyland. I will say props to Imagine for giving a fairly diverse set of characters for an open-ended prompt like Family. And if the Fast and the Furious movies have taught us anything, it's when you're here, you're family. Wait, no, that's Olive Garden. I'm not gonna harp on this too much, but I do find it very refreshing that because Imagine was trained on like 1.1 billion photos of real people, that you tend to get real people. And I'm not trying to bag on Midjourney here. If anything, they've actually spoken at length about trying to improve their, I guess, you know, homogenized characters. But running that same prompt in Midjourney gets us, you know, Zach and Molly with their son Tucker. That said, if you want pretty people, there is also the Instagram side of things. So prompting up Instagram model, City Street gets us this. Overall, it's not bad. It's definitely in line with the look of a, you know, professional. Instagram model shoot. Um, there are some problems. Her eyes kind of have a sort of ghostly look to them. And I think there's like a little bit of artifacting happening right under her nose. The depth of field is pretty strong in this image, kind of leading to a feeling that she's comped in. Although for this style of image, it wouldn't necessarily be uncommon to either have that level of blurred background or even blurred in post. Moving over to one of the channel's recurring characters, the man in the blue business suit, uh, City Street gives us this. Yeah, uh, pretty solid the man in a blue business suit. Uh, here's an alternate. Once again, a man in a blue business suit. Yeah, so pretty solid. Uh, let's look at one more. We also got this one, which shows that Imagine does have a little bit of creativity to it as well. Uh, not my personal cup of tea, but you know, it's there. Speaking of creativity and moving into that direction, here we have cinematic Kung Fu movie animated 3D. Uh, yeah, overall, I like the look and style of this image. We do have some old school busted AI fingers here, but that could easily be taken care of with some in painting. We also got this image, which I thought was pretty cool with what I presume to be a garbled text, at least given the fact that the English underneath the Chinese characters are garbled text. But it did get me thinking, I wonder if you could prompt text in Imagine. So I decided to try out a logo for a coffee company called Black as Midnight. 
uh, and we got this. So the answer is no, it does not do text. Although it does spell coffee the way that I mentally say coffee. Coffee. So overall, is Imagine great? Well, it is free, but I think its real strength is the fact that it was trained on, well, essentially boring photos. For example, in the prompt Suburban Dad coaching Little League, I mean, that's a pretty accurate shot of Suburban Dad coaching Little League right down to the cargo shorts. There are some things that need to be worked out with the model, uh, faces and hands for one, and some old school double limbs. That said, I do think that this is a model to keep an eye on. And again, it's free, so you can just generate to your heart's content. Moving over to the most insane AI avatars yet, we have relightable Gaussian Kodak avatars. So we've previously looked at HeyGen and Microsoft's new Gaia AI avatars, but this is something different. The basic gist here is that these avatars are 3D Gaussians that have been captured at the sub-millimeter level. So that's hair strands and skin pores, and they can react with dynamic face expressions. It is all really impressive, and I'm about to show you something that's gonna completely blow your mind. Uh, but I did wanna point out here that um, if you change the facial expressions on this demo slider, you can see exactly how good that facial pore aspect of the model is. Um, additionally, um, there's a slider to change the light control where you can actually see the catch light in her eye as that moves as well. Um, so yeah, that's really, really pretty cool. If you go through their method overview, you can see why the eyes and skin texture look so good. And it is actually pretty horrifying. Uh, kind of looks like a, a scene from a David Fincher movie. But here's where things get really insane. This is kind of hard to sort of visualize, but um, we have this demo video. And as you'll see in a moment, as we pull out, yeah, that was a VR headset. So this is all actually happening in 3D as well. Where this is all headed, as we saw in the Microsoft Gaia demo, is that you'll be using a video source in order to drive these AI avatars. As we see in the example video here, I mean, it's a little bit on the janky side right now, a little stuttery, but it's getting pretty close. So I know VR meetings have always been kind of a joke, and the general expectation is that we're all gonna be sitting around talking to each other like we're a bunch of bootleg Sims avatars, but I think that Relightable Gaussian avatars very much prove that that is not going to be the case. Next up, we have a new AI video model. This one's called Walt, or Window Attention Latent Transformer. Walt is a diffusion model, but it differs in that it has an attention module that allows the AI to focus on certain areas of the video. It identifies which part of the image is most relevant to the text prompt and diverts its attention towards that. And while these early examples are not necessarily mind blowing, I do think it's important to point out the coherency and movement. Uh, for example, walking here, which I know has always been problematic with AI video, or even the motion in like lightsaber sword dueling, where normally when you try to prompt something like that, you just get two characters that are sort of standing there. Walt does work as a text to video model and also an image to video model and was trained on photographs and video clips that were in the same latent space, which gives gives Walt a better understanding of how movement actually works. Walt is currently just a research model. It's only outputting at 512 by 896 resolution at eight frames a second. Although the team is working on it, so give it some time and I'm sure Walt will grow up to be a Heisenberg. Say my name. Well, that's it for today. And hey, if you haven't had the chance, please do hit that subscribe button. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.